Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and um, I can see that lots of you have already been waiting for this um, live stream to start or maybe you just hang like hanging out here beforehand. This is of course a live stream so if you're watching this anytime after some of the things that I will be saying won't apply to you but I point that out at the time and uh, you're here today to uh, make a little dinky little donkey and he's quite sweet, he's very easy to make, he's, um, he's sort of... Um, well, he's kind of um, as close true to nature as possible, but there's lots of uh, scope to personalize him and stylize him and maybe make him a bit cartoonish if you want to. But um, this donkey here is uh, Mary's friend because he's carried her all the way to the stables and um, sometimes willingly and sometimes not. So what you learn today is uh, you will learn how to make a wire armature um, creation so it's it um, there, are, there are pipe cleaners inside and you will learn how to wrap the wool around the pipe cleaner we're working mostly with wool bats which is our favorite felting fiber as you know um, because they're super fast felting and um, in this case we're using a natural color um, to um, to represent sort of the gray brownish donkey color and um, yeah, and of course, he's all part of our Nativity needle felting kit, which you can still buy. Um, you get the whole Nativity in there, Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, the angel, sheep, and the donkey. And if you're joining us for the first time today, then you um, would be probably interested to know that we have started with the sheep that we've made in one of these live streams. Then we went on to Joseph. Here he is, handsome chap. Then we went on to... Mary and baby Jesus, there she is, mustn't hold Mary by the head, there you go, with her little uh, baby tucked inside her cloak, and then um, today is the donkey's turn, and he's really excited, he's also incidentally one of the longer makes, so um, I've allocated an hour and a half to two hours for this, so hopefully we can. And uh, first of all, I am going to open this box in a minute, but I just want to say hello to some of you. Now, if for whatever reason, I think I don't think I've got a great Wi-Fi um, today, so I'm just going to go into the settings and I might just lower the um, the quality a little bit. So just, just bear with me because I think I might be um, getting a little bit stuck here today. So for the sake of buffering, let's just go a little bit lower and see how that um, works. Give me some feedback if this isn't working for you at all um, and then I can adjust it accordingly but maybe everybody's on everybody's on our Wi-Fi today. Um, so let's see who's here today. Um, lots of you, like I say, this is you're such a chattery chatter, chatterbox. Um, it's always hard to keep up. Oh yes and I should say that Sophie is at the other end today as the makers because Emma's on holiday. It's her birthday week. It's a big one. So we hope she has a lovely time. Um, Jackie, ooh, Jackie, you were here really early. You must be that keen. Um, Sandra, you too. And Faith, of course. Hello, everybody. Um, Diana is there. Natasha. Um, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. And Daniel, of course. Um, Erica. Hi, Erica. Have you got donkeys um, as well as lots of sheep? I wonder if um, you've got donkeys as well. Maria is there. And um, more carols. And Dawn. Hi, Donna. Oh, a Dagus. You have to enlighten us, Donna. This is probably something that gets lost between the Scottish and German translation there. But yeah, I'd love to know that. David is there. Oh no, Liz is there. It's David, but it's Liz. Um, Jan is here. Um, Catherine. Um, Laura is um, here. Alex. Hi, Alex. Um, Gina. My goodness, lots of you. Lots of you. I, I want to say hello to everybody. Um, oh, Erica has got a donkey. That's amazing. Are you going to be needle felting your donkey? I, I'd love to, to see that. If I'm still stopping and starting, I do apologize. I'm just going to um, double check what's going on here. My connection is fine. I will just go down with um, the setting a little bit more again, just to um, the quality will get a little bit uh, less good but the buffering should stop that way. So I'm just gonna go down a bit. Okay, let's try that. And um, if it's really, really bad, then I don't really know what to do. Nothing I can do, just have to endure it. Right, we've got a competition today again. This time you can win one of our um, A6 Earth-friendly felting mats. Um, 
some of you might use these already, lots of you, but you can have never have too many. They're actually packaged up in biodegradable um, plastic as well. They come with um, a helpful sheet of um, how to use them and um, how to take care of them. I've got some pictures on there as well. If you don't know this yet, the top one, um, you use them as a sandwiched mat. The top one is 100% wool, pure, pure, um, pure wool, lovely and soft, and uh, um, can be totally compost composted. The base one is 70% wool and 30% handmade, fi handmade, man-made fiber. It's not handmade; it's man-made, and um, um, that it, that should never need replacing. If you ever need to replace the top one, we do sell them separately as well. You could even add a third layer if you wanted to, but today you're just going to win this complete set here, and. Um, the um, question that we would like you to answer and as usual pop, pop that on the comments whether you're watching today as a live stream um, on YouTube or whether you're re-watching this or maybe watching it for the first time on Thursday on our Facebook um, group The Makers um, what we like you to answer is if your donkey could speak what would it say? One sentence um, what would your donkey say if it could speak the human language? Um, let us know what um, what your donkey would say. Right, and I'm going to unpack. Um, so apparently, I'm still um, in staccato set. I've no, I, I genuinely don't know why that is because we've got a really good um, Wi-Fi here now. But I'm going to go down in even more down and then see what happens. I'll probably just fade into the background. Ah. It might be better now because I've just seen a green light come up. So, right, I'm going to go overhead and I will unpack the uh, nativity box and we'll take the donkey uh, part out. It's getting less and less full, this box, because we've already taken quite a few out. So um, let's go and have a look what's inside this box. Right, there is the box. It's a big box, it's quite fat. It's got um, lots of instructions in there. It's been messed to one side. Um, we've also got the angel instruction in here. The angel we won't be doing um, as a part of the nativity because you might remember that this month's Christmas fairy is actually um, it, it, it's actually an angel. So you could just get your fairy box and make yourself an angel you, um, if or a Christmas fairy or a Christmas angel. You don't have to put all the decorations and the trimmings on there if you want it to be a, a planer for a nativity. But there you are, that, um, that's your option. And um, so we keep the donkey out. Now we've done the sheep, but I didn't use this pack from it. And um, here's the donkey pack, let's get that out. You will probably know by now that in our kits you don't get a, um, a plastic foam mat anymore. We've, we're really trying hard to get away from plastic and our next challenge is to replace all of these bags. We've started doing it but we're not quite there yet. Get all your felting needles for the nativity. You get five felting needles, one coarse, three medium and one fine. These mats here are not as posh as um, the um, earth mats but they're brilliant because again you can use them and they're made from recycled wool so they're already a recycled material they're 100% compostable so once you're done with it you can put them in your compost no harm done to any um, ocean creatures they're all safe right let's get that donkey out um, and um, the competition you can win yourself one of these earth mats I'm going to use this today needle felting on it um, if you tell us what the donkey uh, 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 hello would say if it could speak and um, we're gonna have this com um, this competition going all the way until um, I pin the tail to the don donkey and then we will um, Sophie will be picking um, the winner of the competition at total random we're not judging in any way or form what um, you might call your donkey right so in here we've got a lovely um, gray brown or it's brown gray actually that way around which is the south german merino gotta have a smell it's lovely love the smell you also get some white in here and you get some um this is um the brown black which is a dyed wool and uh, we use this for the molds it's perfect mold color and then you've got two pipe cleaners 
because you need to make the wire armature and then you get your eyes in, in here for the donkey. So I won't take them out yet because I, I have a tendency to lose them. I just put them to one side and then open up the instructions. I try and follow them as much as I can. I'm, I'm notorious for not following my own instructions because there are so many ways of doing things. Right, so um, first of all, I'm going to put all the wool to one side because we're working on the pipe cleaners. So I need to um, set, I need to um, um, cut this in half and uh, I don't want to use scissors because that's, um, and I've got some really horrible looking pliers. So I'm going to uh, wriggle it to um, make it uh, come apart. This is, I've said this every time, but we call them extra strong pipe cleaners because they, they are in itself quite um, unbendy. So when you, when, you, when you put weight on them, they, they sort of, they have quite a lot of bounce in them, which makes them nice and strong, but they're not meant to be um, wriggled and jiggled back and forth all the time. So I've got my two half pipe cleaners now here. Hopefully you've done that too, if you're felting along. Remember our YouTube tutorials stay on YouTube um, forever forever and ever and um and you can uh, rewatch them anytime and then if you rewatch it you can probably just press the stop button if it um if it gets um too fast here so um make a simple wire frame which uh, take one pipe cleaner and cut into two halves which i've done then use the longer pipe cleaner and bend in by about one third so this is this is not precise measurement just bend it in by about one third and uh um, position the shorter length into the bent pipe cleaner part, one at each end. So that means one goes in here. Ah, that's a good idea. Um, yes, sorry, Sophie's just been in my ear. And what she's saying is maybe I'm, because I'm, I've got the YouTube up open on my, um, I'm, I'm just going to close this and see if it, if it works that way. So let's see if my, um, my Wi-Fi will work better. Anyway, because I'm still lagging a bit, apparently. When you re-watch this, well, it's all caught up, so you're not going to get this. So on this occasion, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. So I've got my two um, pipe cleaner lengths here, and I've got the long one here. Um, and now I'm going to secure the shorter pipe cleaners by twisting the long pipe cleaner so that I trap the shorter one. And then I do this here right at the end as well with the last one. So I'm using that one third of the pipe cleaner that I've bent in to uh, trap the two shorter ones. Um, so now I've got, it's almost like sort of a letter H with a bit sticking out. That's the shape that I've achieved here now. And um, so if you, if you now bend these pipe cleaners down, they will become the legs, so you can see these are um, the legs that the donkey will be standing on. And then you're going to now bend that end here, which is in, uh, in effect the head. You bend this in by one third again. And then um, that one third end, you can bend down a little bit. And then you can see that now, if you hold this next to it, there is the shape. There's the donkey's um, frame has happened there. So hopefully you've been able to follow all of that. And now what we need to start doing is we need to start putting wool around the pipe cleaners. The um, Even though we've bent it in the shape, this may not be the working shape um, that you're using to wrap the wool around. So um, I'm just going to take little strands of wool. So you've got your big what here and I'm just tearing off little strands like so as long as you can possibly get them. And if they're too thick, then just tear off um, shorter strands. So we're working with small quantities and we're actually starting on one of the um, legs for the donkey. So what I'm, um, don't worry about bending it out of shape because you need a working arrangement here. So first of all, you get your wool to grip into the pipe cleaner by um, just making a start by letting the, the wispy ends grip into that um, chenille covering. And uh, once you've done this, um, and you've covered sort of the, the end of the foot by about one to two centimeters, then you can bend this in so that you trap the uh, wool in that pipe cleaner and you're uh, getting rid of the sharp end of the pipe cleaner. And then you're just gonna cover the rest of this leg. If you've missed this one, don't worry, I've got three more legs to show you this on. 
and you um, wrap the wool up and every time you get to the top of the leg just um, wrap the remaining wool around the joint where the pipe cleaners meet the main body pipe cleaner and that will start securing the legs so they don't wibble and wobble about anymore. Okay, so I'm doing this on the other side as well. Um, going around the wool and then I bend this in like that and then I go around the pipe cleaner end and start wrapping the wool around here. So I'm bending the head out of the way, I just want a good working area so I don't get my, my wool constantly caught on some other parts. Um, flat like a ribbon, that's how we wrap wool around the pipe cleaner. Keep it work close to the pipe cleaner so you keep it nice and taut. And, um, and then if you've got some leftover wool, just use that to wrap it around the joint where um, the joint even where you've joined the pipe cleaners together and start securing it but you're already sort of starting to wrap the main body as well and then just put the pipe cleaners back down into position so now you have got two legs sometimes it can be that one leg is slightly shorter than the other you can sort of pull one out a little bit more and adjust it um, but if not we can always extend the leg, leg with a bit of wool later on and then you do the same on the hind legs um, with wisps of wool exactly how you've done the first leg strap it around it. Please don't panic if you're not keeping up with me. I know that I'm quite a, a fast crafter. I try and um, do something else in a minute so that you've got time to catch up. I get both, I get four legs, the last um, two legs covered and then um, I tell you about some other news and bits and pieces that are happening at our end and um, I'm hoping that um, the, um, the streaming is better now with, um, with the extra device out of the way but you never know. Okay, right so I've got my hind legs to cover now. I've got quite a bit of wool left over so I'm just going around the body. As the body needs covering up anyway I might as well use the remainder of that leg wool and go around it. If you haven't got any leg wool left then that's fine too. We'll get there eventually and then do the last leg and remember to bend in the end of the pipe cleaner to hide away that sharp um, wire end and then just cover the leg um, with the rest of the wool. The, 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 um, the foot here is going to be covered with um, the dark brown wool um, or the, the, black, the brown black as we call it. What do we call it? Black brown, can't remember now. One way, one way or another, it's it's kind of black but not quite, and it's kind of brown but not entirely. Right, so you've got um, just to put it back into the right shape. You can just um, bend the pipe cleaners back. Um, that's the donkey standing up there now with a head um, here, and um, you can see that we're getting closer to well with a bit of imagination, we're getting closer to a donkey. Right, I'm gonna let you finish off the legs now. Um, go back to the front camera and I'll tell you a little bit more about what's happening this month. So we're over halfway into November. If you're watching this live, I cannot believe how um, quickly the time has uh, gone, but we've still got lots of our subscription boxes left if you uh, want to subscribe. We obviously have got, always got left uh, lots of left Lots of them left because we're still sending them out all throughout the um, the month. But you can still subscribe if you are not a subscriber yet. And I will just show you what you can make. Ta -ta -ta -ta. It's um, and I've seen some amazing amazing things that people have made already so thank you very much for sending these you've been super speedy getting this uh, needle felted up I think you must have had a real like a real burst of energy to get this amazing woodland creation needle felted with a little badger that he is actually he pops out there and um he's having a good look at that donkey that's lying flat on on his side <laughs> having a little sniffle snuffle stand him up so he doesn't feel so inferior he's saying hello 
And um, the, 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 the badger lives in this uh, badger set, of course, which is this whole creation here is made from our structural felt, which is a new product that we're now also listing on our website. So you can buy this. Um, it's a really solid sheet of felt. It's probably about one centimeter thick. And um, whatever that is in inches, I've no idea. Maybe, I don't know, is it half an inch? No, maybe not. Maybe it's just under half an inch, I think. I only remember that because I once, um, when I first moved to the UK, I went to the hairdressers and I didn't know anything about inches. And I had, and they said, oh, how much do you want cut off? I'm like, I was thinking of a centimetre. And they said, an inch? And I thought, oh, well, one is one. You know, can't be that much difference. And then they cut an inch off and I was oh no that's a lot more than I wanted and of course an inch is about two and a half centimeters so yes anyway I'll never have my hair cut in inches anymore um it's got a little hollow tree trunk on there as well you can design your own creation you don't have to lay it out this way and it's got tiny little mice here um down here in the in the corner as well so you can add some really fine detail if you're that way inclined badger fits into the tree trunk as well look he's stuck oh dear um, and um, and he can go back in here and then you've got an owl sitting here on the tree. I've seen creations where people have made more than one owl because we're always very generous with our will. So you probably can fit a lot more in there. And remember, uh, you can share this on our Everyone a Maker Facebook page and we always have a competition running for all of our subscription boxes. So um, you can enter it by just sharing the image and um, and then you might be the lucky winner that we're picking. The other subscription box that's still um running until the end of December as I showed you was the um the Christmas fairy so you can still get this and of course we've also got our surprise boxes which is space travel this um month and I've seen some exciting things come through with that one as well so it's it it's all really exciting um so anyway there's um my donkey I don't know how yours looks like at the moment but not much of a donkey I guess but we just need to keep um adding meat to the bones now. So I'm going to go back onto the overview camera so you can see what's happening here next. Got lots of wool. This is actually probably more wool than you need, but that, like, like I say, we always like to be more generous with the wool than less than not putting enough in there. And you, and you shout and you say, I haven't got enough wool, send me some more. So um, we're now putting more body onto the donkey. So again, we're now what you might have noticed is I'm using a slightly fatter strand because I, I know that the body of the donkey needs to be built up a lot more than the legs. And um, the legs are quite spindly, but I'm leaving them like that at the moment because I can always add more if I, if I need to. And um, so I'm adding more on here. And then I'm also going to add wool onto the head now remember this is the neck and this is the the head so we want to keep that separate so we want to follow that line when you wrap the neck and then you go around the bend and you make the head so we need to keep that quite distinct and with a head obviously we want to make sure that we don't overdo it and build, give him a, a massive big um, um, snout before we we know in in proportion to the rest where we need to go with this so build up the layers slowly but surely and my donkey looks like this now so um there is actually a picture on here where you can see the two donkeys together which i can do for real here um it's it when you make a second donkey it's always easier because you've got a first donkey to go by but um, um, that photo in there should hopefully be quite useful. And then it's just a question of adding more wool to the whole shape. So you now need to um, really build up the wool. He definitely needs a, a much more on its on his bum. Um, there comes a point, I haven't needle felted at all yet. Um, there comes a point where you need to start needle felting. Now, to make these legs less wobbly here at the back, you can also just go round the back. It's like putting a nappy on a donkey. <laughs> oh dear, it's not um, the best solid nappy there. Pull his leg in. Um, so um, Sophie will tell you all about how um, about putting nappies, not on a donkey necessarily, but practicing for her new baby. So um, it's a few years ago since I put last nappies on some on a, on a little child, but I'm sure that um, 
Sophie could do a splendid job putting Nappy on this donkey. Um, right, here we go. And um, before anybody's asking, I think um, she's got just over four weeks left before her baby is due. Christmas baby, like Mary had baby Jesus. Right, so adding some more bulk to the donkey. I still haven't needle felted, still only making use of this um, really lovely soft wool that's quite, it's it's really nice to work with a wool bat like this because it feels like it wants to stick to itself, like almost like Velcro. But at this point, when you get to um, the wool where it starts looking a bit fluffy, then do take your felting needle and give it a few steps so that you can start establish um, can start establishing some shape to it. So the the, ba the basic shape of the donkey is that they have got quite broad um, backs and bums and um, and sort of quite, I mean you could give him more of a tum tummy hanging down, you could even give him a bit of a like a, um, a curved back that's quite sweet, I mean that's something that you can you can push that into place later on. But if you want to do that, then, you know, sometimes donkeys, they've got the most enormous um, tummies hanging down and, and their, their spine is all curved. You can do that. It just adds um, character to your make. And um, and so there's there's lots of personalization that you can make happen. Um, whilst I'm stabbing away here, I will also just remind you that you can get the Nativity um, at a discounted price. You get 10% off if you um, make use of our Nativity discount. This is um, still valid until um, the end of this month. You get 10% off with the code Nativity10. And if you're a sub club, um, if you're a subscription sub subscriber, your subscription subscription that's not makes no sense if you're one of our box subscribers then you can even get 20 percent off with your sub club code and those of you who are subscribers know exactly what to do right let's go back to stabbing the donkey oh i really want to know what names or uh, not names what um things your donkey will be saying i will just sneak really quickly onto um onto the stream probably completely um sabotaging the stream that I'm um, doing right now but I do want to know what people are saying so I'm just gonna have a quick look at the at the chat right so what have we got um, yes yeah, sorry about the stop start voice doesn't make much the picture at the moment oh I'm just gonna go onto the um, front camera as well so you don't have to look at um, a strange donkey. I hope I'm not completely compromising the stream now, but I do need to see some of these nice... Um, oh, Donna says, a digus or digu is a Chilean rodent. Oh, I see. So it's nothing Scottish. I'll be post a picture on the page later. Use your caracal wool, natural black and some horse whiskers. Oh, and silky clay, and silk clay for the feet. So when you say horse whiskers, you probably mean horse tail for whiskers because horses don't have whiskers or do they? Oh, that's a good question. And uh, Diane um, says, my donkey would say, please tickle me behind my ears. <laughs> um, I'm fed up of carrots, says um, David's donkey. No, that's actually Liz. Give me another five a day. <laughs> another vegetable. Um, Fenny says, my donkey would say, don't forget the thumbs up for the makers. Oh, thank you, Fenny, for reminding. So give us a thumbs up on this um, live stream and also make sure that you get, um, that you're subscribed to our channel and get all your family and friends to subscribe too, because we are edging closer and closer to more and more subscribers. I nearly said a number there, but we've just gone over 2,000. So it's a long way to 3,000, but we can do it. We can do it. Maybe before Christmas. Bonnie says, my donkey would say, why does Eeyore get all the love? I'm cute too. Absolutely. Totally. I actually, I, I never knew about um, grumpy donkeys until Eeyore, um, the story of Eeyore. I always thought donkeys were quite happy, little, um, you know, quite pig-headed. But apparently um, donkeys are not pig-headed. They just have got a greater sense of risk than horses. So they, they're, um, that makes them quite different from horses, that they... Um, they, if they fear that something is not safe, you cannot get them to um, to do anything. They have they have a real sort of sense of of, of risk. They're good risk assessors. Um, I didn't know that, but that's what I read. Um, Gina would say, my donkey would say, "Ouch! Stop stabbing me with those needles." Oh, 
Um, Erica says, my donkey says, hug me, he loves that. Um, uh, Bonnie says, also, has anyone seen Nativity 3? Oh, is this, this, this is a film, obviously. I haven't seen that. I must put that on my um, Christmas binge list, definitely. Um, my donkey would say, stop working so hard, Natasha, and come and play with me. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to go out of this again so that I'm not, um, not sabotaging my, my stream. Um, I will just tell you a donkey story. Um... The, um, the, the donkey story I want to tell you is that, and I might have told this before, so I do, do apologize if you heard me say this before, where we used to live a few years ago, we, we went on holiday, um, I think we were camping in Cornwall or something, something like that, a, a very child friendly holiday. And uh, um, as we were coming back, I sort of, you know, when you hear a noise, and in your subconscious, you, you sort of, you don't pay too much attention, but you just sort of hear a noise. But I didn't really think much about it. I just genuinely didn't think about it. And then my husband, he said at some point, he said, I swear I just heard a donkey. And there were no donkeys at all. There were no donkeys where we lived. Cows, yes. Sheep, yes. Donkeys, no. And um, and then we heard it again. And it, it what happened, totally unbeknown to us, was that across the valley, they set up a donkey sanctuary. And lo and behold, there were the donkeys. We could actually see them looking out of the window. And because sound travels really easy across the valley, we could hear them at five in the morning. Every morning, you could set the clock to it. That's when they were fed. And they probably still do it. We don't live there anymore. But I'm sure that the donkeys are still um, making that sound. And I, I will be honest, I do miss it. I love it. It's They're, they're really fascinating creatures. Right, so I'm going to um, go to the overhead camera again and um, I will just add more wool to this. So this is just now a question of adding more wool, felting it down as you're adding it and, um, and that's basically how we are going to uh, continue with the donkey, just adding wool, felting it down and um, just gently with your needle make sure you don't step straight into the pipe cleaner that will bend your needle um, or it might break it straight away but once you've got a bent needle it's actually quite um, well quite hard to unbend it because there's no flexibility in the felting needles. I do also want to tell you about um, some other things that are happening because we're extremely busy this this month there's just so much that we're doing um, racing towards Christmas and I actually I am absolutely determined to have Christmas as a as an enjoyable event i have no idea what we're doing yet but probably not much different from what we're normally doing um basically sitting around eating a lot and watching tv that's uh, maybe going for walks the dogs need exercise and so do we sitting around doing nothing and um, i'm absolutely uh, determined that it's going to be a good time for everybody and uh, nothing will stop us doing that because for me christmas is more about i don't know it's a time of reflection it's a time where you stop and you um, maybe take stock and see what the year has held for you in good ways and bad ways, why ever not. And um, yeah, it's just, it to me, it's not just about um, presents and not just about going out and celebrating. Maybe this is sort of more of the German way of Christmas or maybe um, lots of you are, are doing this um, too. But um, Christmas, I always remember, it was it's absolutely unheard of that on Christmas Eve you'd go out to the pub in Germany. It's like that is the that is the main Christmas day for the Germans. So that's where we get our presents on the 24th. And um, our children, I think one, well, so we always have a German Christmas. We do um, all the presents on the 24th. And once our children complained and they said, why do we always have to have a German Pre uh, a German Christmas and I said okay we'll have an English one one year where you get your present the, uh, in the morning on the 25th and then they're like what we have to wait an extra 12 hours <laughs> I'm like yes <laughs> no it's fine we keep we stick to the German Christmas so that was um, that was that never meant never been mentioned ever again after that so um what, what I'm concentrating building the wool up now is I need to build up the body but I want to keep it in proportion with the rest of of um obviously with a head so there's the neck here there's a the head here is quite small still so I'm going to build up a little bit more there as sort of with horses and ponies and all the rest of it they have quite square heads so when I say square I mean they have quite yeah they have the the jaws are quite um um 
distinct, we're not adding that much detail to the donkey. So if, if you feel a little bit unsatisfied that this donkey hasn't got sort of like the um, very detailed features of a donkey, then you can go and do it. You have all the tools and all the wool and everything to do it. But for the sake of our donkey here, this is this is quite a simple donkey. We're not over complicating him um, or her. So we'll just um, we'll just add um, the wool and what will be very distinct on the donkey is when we get to it are the ears because ears are so much bigger on a donkey than on horses and um, and also the stripe on the back and just uh, they have a very different mane they have more like a they have more like a brush or a stubble rather than um, sort of long a long mane or at least the donkey that I'm making somebody will tell me now that there are donkeys that look completely different but um, I'm making um, this donkey with with a shorter mane or like a um, they've also got very different tails they don't have floating um, floating tails they've got more again like a like um, a string um, no that's not the word it's more like a cow's tail where you've got um, a bit of a bushy bit at the bottom but um, most of it is sort of quite un unhairy that makes sense it makes no sense whatsoever unhairy you know what i'm talking about I'll, t I'll show it to you when we get to the donkey's tail well you must know what donkey's tails look like because you've been playing pin pin the donkey's tail is that is that how it's called pin the donkey's tail i can't actually remember so now i've added bulk to the head i feel like it needs to be added here and that's basically the game that we're playing here right now is always oh where does it need adding oh yes now it needs adding a bit more here on the chest and on the tummy and at some point you might not want to wrap um the wool all the time you might actually just want to add little patches of wool and to do this you just sort of tear bits off and lay them on top of each other so you've got a bit of a wad wadding here and then you can lay them onto where you want them to go so say on the tummy and then you just stab them uh, down into place rather than wrapping the wool all around the shape where um, you're building up bulk equally around it but you might not want that because um, it might look like it's got a floating ring around his tummy if you keep doing that so we're just adding the bulk more to where we want it to be rather than um, wrapping the wool around it and um, at some point I'm going to have to add a little bit more um, grey onto the donkey's legs because they they look quite spindly and thin now in comparison to the rest. So hopefully you're all keeping up with this. Um, whilst you're adding more bulk to your donkey, I'm going to go to the big camera again and I... Um, I, I was just touching on onto it how um, how busy we are this month. We've actually got um, until the end of the month. We've got four workshops that are still happening. Two of them are with a knitting and stitching show, with a beyond knitting and stitching, I should say. You are not too late to get your workshop pack from us and then book your ticket with them directly. You don't need the workshop pack to do it. You can just bo book the ticket ticket and um, my understanding is that they these workshops will be available for the next six months so I will be doing it live um, starting this coming Sunday which is the 22nd of November from 2 30 until 4 I believe so that's the first time you can actually see it and I will be making a little dog little curled up dog with uh, with you all so that you, the workshop pack you can buy is for the little dog and then the following weekend which um I can't remember quite the timing for this but this is all, this is the Sunday the 29th I'll be making the peacock some of you might have already made one of those uh, with me um through a different workshop but this is what we're are going to be making together but even if you miss that particular date because you're busy or you've just forgotten it's on or you haven't bought your ticket or whatever you can still buy these tickets for I think up to six months afterwards and watch the uh, the workshop still while whilst it won't be live I don't have much in, much interaction with anybody anyway so I don't think it matters and then on the 29th 27th and 28th which I believe is a Friday and a Saturday we um, we will be doing a workshop I will be running a workshop with a handmade festival they've got a Christmas version of it to make a little a little uh, robin bauble and um, you can join that as well the best thing is to go onto our website into the workshop 
area and on there you can um, find the workshop packs and then there's also a link that takes you to the respective organizers uh, page where you can book the workshop either at the beyond knitting and stitching or at the handmade festival the christmas edition and um, yeah it'd be lovely to see you there and um, have a bit of crafting time together whether you might already know how to do all of this and it might be terribly boring, but maybe you can get together with a friend who hasn't needle felted before and um, sit down together, have a nice um, hot glue vine. Yes, I, I do miss my glue vines. And um, and have a little, a little time of togetherness. I recently ran a workshop for the Country Living magazine uh, making a needle felted robin and um, lots of people have told us that they just they just made it made something with their daughter they had a bit of quality time with a with a family member um hopefully you're able to do this with anybody who's in your bubble and um and just have a bit of fun and have a bit of time so remember that this will be streamed again we have a watch party on thursday at 7 p.m over on facebook where you can also win yourself the um needle felting um, mat which is the earth mat or the earth friendly uh, felting mat and um, to do to win this we just want to know if your donkey could talk what would it tell you right now um, and um, yes yeah, so this donkey can't talk at all yet because he hasn't even got a mouth um, nor a face nor eyes so I'm going to work a little bit more on him but I think he's coming along quite nicely this donkey's very excited he's gonna have a friend a friend a donkey friend they're actually um, quite social animals donkeys i think they do like it when there's lots of donkeys in there what is it a pack a donkey pack herd probably a herd horses are herds right even even boar are herds which i i thought was um was i, I didn't think of her, of boars being in a herd i'm just gonna have a quick check into um the chat again so just bear with me and uh, let's see what um what's going on at your end um Oh, where's it gone now? Oh, there. Okay. So, just bear with me. <clears throat> oh, there we are. What are people saying? My donkey would say, forget about the tail, make me a carrot. That's Laura saying. Oh, talking about a carrot, we actually have got a free tutorial of how to make a carrot on our website. So, hopefully, um, um, Sophie will copy that out and let you know the, um, the link to that. Um, Catherine says, my donkey's words of wisdom, however, he said, brightening up a little, we haven't had an earthquake lately, <laughs> oh gosh, well, that's, um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's quite a cheerful thought, I guess, um, Carol says, I'm a dinky donkey do, and very pleasant to meet you, oh, that's nice, it's a, um, even like a nice poem I'm gonna read face now but I'm gonna read it first just in case she's writing something that makes no um, makes no sense in that at all right Faith says having finished my donkey ha giggled and thanked me for all the tickly needlework then he told me a joke what happens when you mix a kitten a donkey and a world cup <laughs> a catastrophe <laughs> oh that reminds me actually I want to show you what's happening next month with the subscribe subscription boxes uh, you can make yourself um, a curled up kitten fast asleep in a basket that you can also make from the structural felt that you will get in your subscription box so use another use for the structural felt it's brilliant and uh, the little um, cat what's special about her is that you um, you you have a, a wire running through the whole of the body and you can make um, a pom-pom tail and um, and and you can pose that tail so it doesn't just flop up, um, down it is actually quite sturdy and solid and I just always think how nice would this look next to your fireplace or, or in a cozy place maybe Maybe you've got an aga or, or something like that you can have your little kitten lying next to it and um, the other thing I will say is that um, if you like the idea of making more characters for your nativity remember we have got a tutorial of how to make three kings um, using peg dolls which of course is a great addition uh, traditionally they don't come out until the 6th of January but who cares you can have your three kings out already and there are actually here so I'm just going to show you them. There we are. They're all very smartly dressed and they've got uh, posh crowns on as well. Um, he needs a haircut, but that's okay. 
and um, you can make those three kings and they can be part of the nativity if you wish. And uh, the other thing that you can make to be part of a nativity is you can make an ox. Um, but we've only got the Highland Cow pack. So if you want to know how to make um, maybe an ox that can be part of the nativity, then you could get your Highland Cow pack and just make it into an ox instead of a Highland Cow. Why ever not? There's nothing stopping you doing that. Um, I have got an ox story, which I am happy to tell you while I'm going back to the donkey overhead. Hopefully you've all caught up a little bit more now. I, I did actually make an, a donkey to go into the Making Simple Needlefelds book as part of the nativity. And I, I worked um, all morning on a donkey and then I left the room for about two minutes. And when I came back, um, I couldn't find the ox. The ox was on the floor and it was in more pieces than it started out because my um, our cocker spaniel thought it was much more fun to play with an ox and shredded to pieces literally and I'd only left the room literally to just nip to the loo and when I came back <laughs> there was no there was no ox and it, it it disheartened me so much I was so upset by it that I actually couldn't get myself to make another one so hence there's no um, there is no ox in um, in the Making Simple Needlefelds book. But there is a Highland cow. That was the first time I attempted a cow again after that traumatic event. And I'm sure that um, you can tell us um, similar stories of where your loved pets and dearly adored pets have um, destroyed one thing or another that you've spent hours and hours making. Right, I'm um, bolstering up his bum a bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give him... Um, I'm going to give him um, a, a bit a neck, another layer on the legs. So hopefully that will um, make the legs look less spindly. So I'm just stabbing more wool. And I've, the way that I've added the wool is just by putting a, um, a pad onto it again rather than wrapping it. So I'm now just um, targeting the areas that need building up. And I lay the wool on top and then I um, felt it down accordingly. And that's how I've um, done this with the donkey I've absolutely loved this wool if you if you it is a really good donkey wool it's also a great badger wool if um if a lot of people a lot of us think that badgers are like a real sort of steel gray but they're actually not they're quite a dirty gray and this this is 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 a perfect color for badgers and for um for donkeys it's that sort of yeah it's it's the more realistic gray not necessarily the picture book gray that you imagine badgers and donkeys to be in but it is a, it is a great um color for making um donkeys and badgers and it is if you need to know it is the south german merino um the um brown gray as we call it right now i'm going to uh, work on the legs a little bit more so that they're not not quite so thin and again i'm just using very small amounts because i'm working on the legs and wrap the um, wool around the legs might have to bend them out of the um, a little bit so out of the place out of the space out of out to the side again and get the wool up into the body and stab that down if um, if you have bits sticking out on the leg then just felt these into place just go past the pipe cleaner with very shallow little stabs and then um, go around, work your way around all of the legs to do this. And let's do this one here now. When we're, we're going to add the hooves later on. So this is not something I'm doing right now. I'm just um, bringing the legs into proportion size-wise with the rest of the body now that I've built so much up on the body. And remember, you can always uh, cover a join again if, if it looks slightly weird because you've added something else. That's just the nature of needle felting. You go over it again and again and again to add more um, add more wool over a join or an area that looked okay a minute ago and then suddenly it's, it's changed because you've added more to it. That's just the nature of needle felting. It's never quite finished until you put the needle to one side and you say, I'm done. Okay, so the don donkeys have got um, 
white tummy so we're going to add that later to him as well that's what, uh, one of the reasons why you've got white in there I'm, I'm trying to keep the tummy quite soft because I think it looks quite nice if they've got um, a fat little tummy it's been well fed this donkey well looked after and um, now I'm going to do more do more here around the front legs if you happen to stab the needle into your um, into your pipe cleaner and you're going to break a needle, um, the most unlucky thing that can happen is that the uh, one bit of the needle um, is suddenly has disappeared and you know it's somewhere in your make. It has happened to me, I, I will be honest. Um, the less unlucky bit is that you just bend the needle and then what I would do is I would just put that one to one side because it will break inevitably um, at some point so you can avoid having a, um, a broken bit of needle in your make. If you have a broken part of needle in your make you can just gently squeeze it and see if you feel the needle. Um, if you cannot find the needle um, despite what you're doing then um, you have a choice to make. You can either start over again which could be a painful choice or you could just remember that you've got a needle in there and must never never give it to anybody to play with um, put it on the highest top shelf that you have and uh, really make sure that it doesn't get into the wrong hands because you really don't want a broken needle to be um, found by somebody by accident and um, you might also find that if you continue to work on your make, it might sort of work its way up. That often happens as well. So be mindful if you continue working on um, one of your makes with a broken needle inside, then it might it might um, come out and surprise you that way. So just be really mindful. But I mean, uh, ideally, what I need to say to you is that you um, dispose of your um, little create creation as long as you're not so attached to it yet and start over but if anybody's got any other useful tips please do share them with us because we don't um we don't know everything we just know what we've experienced ourselves but you might have had a very different experience so do share um with us we'd love to hear it so um i'm now going to um add sort of a bit of add a bit of bulky on the shoulders because i i need to build a little bit more uh, bulk up here on his chest and I'm then going to do that on this on the same thing on the other side as well there we go that's it and um, I've said uh, don't be deterred about if you don't celebrate um, Christmas in um, the way where you you get your nativity out or anything like that then don't don't be deterred by the um, by the uh, tutorials because they're just basically really useful not you know not every donkey is associated with a nativity not every sheep is either and um, you don't have to make Mary or, or um, Joseph or baby Jesus you could just make any figure um, with a baby or any bearded bearded figure with a hat so it's not as if um, the nativity is the um, is necessarily what you what you need to make you can use the tutorial um, as a as a guide to make other figures maybe you can make your family whole different type type of um, people and uh, you get all of what everything that you need in the nativity kit but um, like I say you don't need to make the nativity from it right so um, this donkey looks he looks quite handsome right now I'm just gonna felt his head down a little bit more because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to give him the very distinct um, white I always think it's a smiley face so he's got like a the, the nostrils have become the eyes and this is the mouth but this is what we're going to add on onto him afterwards so for this you need to use your white wool so the first time we're going to a different color wool and you keep this really wispy so make sure you've got a nice sort of dust dusting just a dusting of wool and wrap this around his um, nose there and then stab it in and let the white sort of close up at the at the front so you want this to come round and cover the, the all of the front of the nose as well it's quite nice to keep the um the white if you need to change to your medium needle then do so i've been using a coarse needle for 
most of this work. But you will know um, that the coarse needle isn't working for you anymore when it just bounces um, off the wool. So you, it doesn't fit inside anymore and you need to change the needle around to a, a thinner one. Uh, depending on how, how hard you felt, uh, this might happen sooner than later. And if the medium needle is no good, then do change to um, the fine needle, which you also get in the nativity kit. So you get coarse, medium and fine needles in there. And just to remind you, the needles uh, are measured in the wire gauge, which uh, for the fine, what we call a fine needle is a 40 uh, wire gauge. What we call a medium is a 38 and what we call a, nor nor a coarse is a 36. And um, yeah, that's basically what we do. Now I want to add a little bit more white on here and I also want to add a little bit more grey there because the head has shrunk a lot now Now that I've been needle felting it. So I'm going to be a bit more, um, add that white a bit more forward to the nose and then when I add a bit more grey to the head I think the nose will then be more in proportion because the nose is quite big now and the rest of the head has shrunk in comparison. And this is just something where you constantly have to adjust what you're doing. Just add add where it needs to be, felt it down where it needs to be um, shrunk down. So that's, that's sort of the, the main um, advice about needle felting. Um, and do start with simple projects and build your confidence. There's nothing worse than um, taking off too big a bite and then you it and then you think you're rubbish at it. Nobody's rubbish at needle felting. Everybody can do it. You just need to um, find the right entry point and then um, build your confidence as you're doing it. So don't give up. Just keep doing it. If 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 you if you get um, stuck, we are there to help you. Join our everyone a makers um, everyone a maker. A Facebook group ask us question you can message us we try our very best to answer you as quickly as we can um, we are obviously also only human so at, sometimes we have to sleep and um, and and not work but I think we're probably one of the most responsive companies that you can um, find we do passionately believe in what we do and 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 we 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 can't just help but having to um, having to come to your rescue uh, whenever we can. Um, but like I say, do sometimes we do sleep as well. So especially at the weekends, you might not get an instant response. Right. So is that leg a bit? No, it's actually OK. So my donkey now looks like this. You might also just always, you know, prod it and um, squish it and, and do that with it because that can also put it into the right shape. And um, so now I'm going to put this funny little face on on his nose, on his muzzle, and I'm um, the the nostrils are like little black spots. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go quite um, at a at an angle into the nostril. So rather than going into it that way, I'm actually going um, from the front because that sort of um, creates um, an um, the right angle hole, if that makes sense, because they're not on the side, the nostrils, they are at the front more. So I've got a little nostril there, and then I do this on the other side, just a little bit of black, sink that into the front, try and keep that symmetrical. That's always the challenge when you're doing anything with animals, it's the symmetry that can, um, that can sort of make it look slightly weird. And it's quite hard to keep the symmetry um, going. And then I put a little string-like shape underneath for his mouth. This is, like I said to you, this is not um, a very detailed donkey. If you want to make it more detailed and you want to work more on the nostrils and you want to get the mouth far more detailed, you can definitely do this, but this is quite a simple donkey that anybody can needle felt, and it's quite recognizable because of the the main features um, are there. And like I said, this obviously really freaks me out a bit when I do this because it looks like the donkey's got a face on his um, <laughs> it's got a smiley face on his um, on his nose, but um, it will all it will all come together in the big picture. There, two smiley faces. Right, so. Um, What's happening next in the instructions? Okay, so what what's always a good thing to do is, is to put 
um, an indentation where the eyes are going to go because that often sort of puts the whole head into perspective and you, you have a better idea of proportions. So do this on both sides. Again, try and do them in the same, same place so that they're like a mirror image. Best to look at it from the front. So they're here now, the two eyes. Donkeys have got really big eyes actually. Um, so I'm making an indentation here. Remember not to hit too hard onto the onto the um, inside because there is, I can feel every so often I'm hitting the pipe cleaner and, and especially because it's doubled up. And um, if at this point, if you feel you need a little bit more on top of the head, you can do this too by just uh, layering the wool up again. I've just made a little wad here. Now is the time to do it before you attach the ears. So I'm just putting a more of a domed head here on him and by just adding a bit more of that wool over the top and you can felt this down quite softly you can repeat it too if you need to if you if just one um, portion of extra uh, wadding doesn't um, what we're going to do next is we are going to do just need to turn the page I know what I want to do but that might not be what it says in the instructions oh yes we're going to um, continue on the eyes so uh, for the eyes what, what I'm doing is I'm going to add a little tiny little white disc into the eye socket that I've just needle felted um, and we, we are, we've just done this for one hour so I think we'll, we will be finishing this in an hour and a half but um, I'm going to just go back to the front camera because I, I want to give you a chance to catch up if you're needle felting along. I do know that I, um, I can do this quite speedily so let's just have a look what's happening at your end and I hope that the buffering isn't too bad but this is my donkey, my earless donkey at the moment, he can't hear anything, he can't see, he can smell, he's got nostrils, he can't um, um, wave his tail around yet so quite a sad little donkey at the moment but I think I think we're getting there. This one's very excited. He's gonna have a little donkey friend. He can't wait to see him. It's like, come on, get him ready, get him ready. He wants to play with him already. Right, let's have a look at the chat. Um, what's going on here? What 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 would your donkey say? Um, I must never read from the back to the to the top. It's just so disorienting, but I never know where I was. I have to ask Pam Duffy for some tips on how she keeps up with the comments. But I, I, I don't want to say, but I think you lot are a lot, I, I, you're just so chatty, I can't keep up with it. Um, oh, uh, oh, we're talking about needles now. Um, so Catherine says, I have the red and purple ones from the makers. That's the twisted needles, our favorite needles. Um, I cried when I snapped a red one. I got get too involved with my work and forgot to slow down. Oh, bless you. Don't cry when you break a needle. There's so many more reasons to cry. Um, so good. Um, if you're a beginner, you might not, you can't tell the difference straight away. But as you get more proficient with needle felting, it is definitely worth investing into good needles. And we have got um, a needle felting mega pack, which I'll try and show you this. Um, it's got every, it's got one of every single one of our needles in it, so that you, because needles are is a very personal um tool. You, I might say, oh, I love twisted needle, and you might say, oh no, actually, I I like the triangular standard needles, or you might say, oh, I like the cross star needle, or um, you know, whatever whatever takes your fancy, or you might say. I swear by the 40 twisted needle for finishing it off. I don't use it very often because my things are not um, that solidly felted and, and, and finished off. But um, ha if you get the mega needles, you get one of each one of our needles and then you can decide which ones you want to stock up more of. And I think that's such, it's just a really great opportunity. It, it, it's not dissimilar from um, getting our sample wire pack because there's such a huge um, amount of wire that we sell and not everything works for every project that you're making so you get a good length of wire of all the wires that we do and then you can um, decide in the future which ones to buy rather than buy the whole thing already and then you don't get on with it so that's by the by um, Would you recommend using wire instead of pipe cleaners if you want it sturdier? Okay, so the pipe cleaners have got their limitations in, in terms of size. And I, th I think that's sort of a limitation. The Highland Cow has actually got 
the green uh, paper covered a uh, florist wire in it. Um, they're, um, what are they called? Green stem wires or something like that. We do sell them as well and they're a lot stronger. In fact, the little snowdrop fairy, oh, that's maybe a good um, time to talk about um, the December fairy box. You can make one of these little, little uh, wild um, snowdrop fairy holding a little snowdrop. That green wire that she's holding is really strong. I can't even sort of bend it by just bending it that way. So yes, the answer is yes. If you want to uh, make sturdier things, then um, choose different wires. How funny that I mentioned wires when I didn't even know you were talking about wires. So the wire pack, the wire sample pack will give you a really good idea what kind of wires works for what kind of um, project. For the cat, she's got the, I think she's got the 1.5 millimeter uh, cotton covered copper wire in there. I always have to say that slowly, otherwise it, um, it's quite a mouthful and I might say it wrong. So um, yeah, definitely different wires for different projects. And if you don't know which one, you can ask us in the first instance or just get your wire sample pack and then you can try it out all yourself. We have got a YouTube tutorial um, where we've, tested all the wires and um, we've even done the wriggly and jiggly test which ones break by just doing this and um, so you you're more than welcome to re-watch this this is on our youtube channel obviously um as um as i say everything stays on the youtube channel so do have a look um on that um oh i did tell you about the workshops yes so oh i also should say that um the stable that mary and um joseph are in are um is made from the structural felt and um, I, I needed it to have a nice um, back there and I've just put the bottom uh, mat of the um, of the earth mat in there. That, that seemed a good thing to do. There you go. It's just jammed in there and it works really well to hold it up nice and stable. Ooh, nice and stable for a stable. That was a bit of a very, very lame um, joke. And um, I'm gonna go back to the donkey now because we wanna finish off the ice so he can see what I'm doing. Um, there we go. So um, we're gonna put a bit of white into the eye. That will sort of enhance the eye when, when you do it. it. It just makes the eye look a little bit more complete and I'm pre-shaping this with my fingers at the moment. And then I'm adding it into, into that eye socket that I've needle felted. If you have a wool, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got lots of like wispy fibers here. You can just sort of almost twizzle them around your needle. So they, they, they get caught at the end of your needle. I don't know if you can see that. And then you can stab it in. So give it a bit of a twist around, catch this. It's a bit like rolling spaghetti onto your fork. Um, that's what you can do with a uh, coarse, long fibers that aren't behaving themselves. Just think of spaghetti and winding them around your fork. Um, so just add that little white patch into the eye socket. That's another good opportunity to um, check that your um, eyes are in the symmetrical. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. And um, then you need to get your glue in eyes out. Hope you've got your glue at the ready, she said. I'm just going to leave that standing upside down a bit because it's getting a little bit low. Get the eyes out. Yeah. If you want to make the eyes bigger, these are, um, I think these are the five millimeter or the four millimeter eyes. I'm just going to check it, what it says. The four millimeter eyes. You can um, add a little bit of black for the eyes to go on top of it. I'm not going to do that. I'm quite happy with the size there, but that is just a, a trick or, or tip how you can enhance the eyes. Now, if you've got an awl, then use the awl by all means, by, by all means, <laughs> use the awl. The, um, and you have to poke a hole into the donkey's eyes. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So you can probably see that makes quite a distinct um, hole. And then you can sink the pin in there straight away. We do sell these awls, by the way, as well. There you go, got a little eye there looking at you. If you haven't got an awl, then use your felting needle, push it in, it will come out at the other end. Go all the way until the sort of handle sinks in and give it a bit of a jiggle. And then put the pin in, same way. 
And then all you need to do is you don't need to um, take the eyes out again. You just use your glue. We have two types of glue. One is the uh, glue pen, which we really like because we don't use a lot of glue. We don't want, need massive big bottles and then it just dries out. Um, it's also got a really nice fine little... Ooh, nozzle nozzle there just checking yes the glue is ready to come out we've also got a glue bottle with an equally fine nozzle and um, that just has got a little bit more in it but they're either of them are really great and then you just squirt a tiny bit of glue behind the eye push the eye in turn the donkey round get more glue in there push the eye in and <clears throat> then we leave that to dry and um, so <clears throat> we're going to add a little bit of an, um, are we doing this already or are we leaving it to dry? Yes, we're leaving it to dry and we're moving on to the feet next. Oh, I really want to do the ears. So to make the hoofs, you um, need some of that dark uh, brown wool. I think we call it brown black. Oh, or do we call it black brown? I can't remember. Anyway, and um, as you did before, just wrap the wool around the pipe cleaner, but obviously you've got a layer of wool underneath already. And um, and then you felt this into, into place. So remember when I said, if you've got a slightly shorter leg, you can actually extend the leg at this point with a bit of extra wool. I'm trying to keep this quite um, distinct from the rest of the um, um, wool. So I'm trying to keep the, the, the black, um, or the brown black or whatever it's called black brown brown black i think it's called um distinct from the rest of the um the leg so it looks like a hoof and um i just stab it down and i'm trying to be as gentle as i can so i don't actually break my needle because i'm working really close to the wire now and then you repeat this around every single um foot do make sure that um if you need to extend the leg that you're doing it on the right one so um but you can obviously if you have extra at the bottom you can always felt that in mind your fingers because you're felting at a very shallow angle um so try not to um step straight into your finger doing this this one needs to be shortened a bit i think So you're stubbing the brown, no, yes, brown, black. <laughs> Somebody please tell me. <laughs> this dark wool. And make sure that you've got a donkey with similar long legs. And like I say, as soon as you mess with one part, you're going to want to equalize something else out again. He's got quite a soft bum. You could probably do with a bit of more... Um, bum fluff oh my god <laughs> oh let's just put definitely put a, an image in my head that's not a good one okay there we go we might put a, a little bit more onto his bum here just to pat that up a bit donkeys they do have big bottoms oh it's brown black Thank God. Thank you, Sophie, for telling me. Brown, black, brown, black, brown, black. I'll never forget that ever again. Great. Okay, so adding a bit more to this donkey's bottom. And then I'm um, being distracted because I'm actually doing the hoofs. So I do a bit more on, on this one now. Felt that down as well. So I felt first into the out base, I just stab myself, this is what you're not meant to do. And then stab all around and if you can get an angle, get into the top of the... Um, <laughs> into the dark wall. Brown, black, black, brown. <laughs> I've already forgotten. I swear I'm cracking up. Goodness, okay, there. And, um, oh, I know, and on the instructions. I need to see it written down. Brown, black, that's it. I knew it. Okay, and then do uh, the last leg. And we're nearly there. We just need, all we need now are finishing off the eyes, give the donkey the ears, and then we 
pinning the tail onto the donkey, at which point Sophie will be um, choosing the winner of our earth friendly felting mat, which we all love and we can't, we, I, I do believe it's one, it's, if not their best, it's one of the best natural felting mats and our delight I can't even begin to tell you I was listening the other day on the radio to somebody who swims the ocean and she picks up all this rubbish that's um that just ends up in the ocean um and comes from all like all kinds of places it's not just people walking along the beach just chucking things in it comes from from the from the ships that are on the ocean it comes through the sewage it comes through um like um rubbish dumps where where people don't don't care where they dump their rubbish and um, the things that they find in the ocean is absolutely gross and um, and I'm just really pleased that we're not one of the ones that add more rubbish into the ocean right so my donkey is now standing on his um, own four legs own four feet there and there's not there's not one that's sort of oh this one is slightly short just have to push that down a bit you can also position them and then make them sort of the right size again and um, the next thing according to the instructions is that we're actually putting the cross on the back of the donkey um, so we're not going back to the no no hang on a second I must have I must have skipped the step I really want to put the ears on oh I've missed the ears okay so the, the hooves are actually not before the ears the ears come there I thought I, it feels more natural to do the ears first but I just want to show you the two donkeys here side by side now um this one I like it that it's got like a fat little tummy hanging um through a bit and um he obviously needs his ears quite urgently so we're going to do the ears next so actually there's not that much left of that um gray not you know when you when you think how much you did have so um so I've taken two um batches of wool they're sort of like similar it's always good to have to take for both ears to take um the amounts straight away and um well I'll just let you catch up i think what else can i tell you about oh yes so um we've got now a project for our weekend hug the date the 30th to the 31st of january is fully booked but we are now promoting a second date in it's the first weekend in January which is the 6th and the 7th so if you fancy joining us on zoom making um, a valet black nose sheep that looks like that maybe or similar then you are more than welcome to message us we are um, info at themakers.co.uk and um, just tell us that you're interested in our weekend hug it's a Saturday Sunday um, so it's a it's a whole day on a Saturday but obviously broken up you, we don't make you sit in front of a screen all day. It's a Saturday morning, then with a good lunch break, then a Saturday afternoon with a good afternoon break. And then we have a, a, a fun activity on, on Saturday evening. And then we finish the project off on Sunday morning. You get everything sent in the box to make this in a, in a luxury um, treat box um, to make this whole sheep. We should be able to finish this together over the weekend and then you also get some special treats to make you all warm and cozy around the heart and uh, the uh, the weekend will be hosted by myself and Emma um Sophie might pop in if if um if she's um able to with um with a little bundle of joy and this second date is the first weekend in February if I said January then I do apologize I'm February so it's the 6th and 7th of February and um, we will also schedule a zoom question and answer uh, date again once we have a few people that uh, might be interested to come and join us so that we can directly address some of the um, questions that you may may have and you get a feel of what it might be like looking um, at us through a zoom version okay so that's the um, valley black nose sheep that you um, will be making during the weekend hug right ears ears for the donkey so there's the two batches of wool that I've just separated and now all I'm going to do is I'm literally shaping the ear on the mat as I'm doing it so I, I, um, I make um, that sort of rounded triangular shape on the mat there and then I'm folding in the bits that fall outside that shape that I've just made up 
and stab it all flat on the mat. You notice I'm not stabbing around here because I need something uh, unfelted that will attach to the head of the donkey. And when you stab something flat, this is not the finished size by the way, when you um, stab something flat on the mat you have to lift it off quite, um, quite often. But it's already it's a flat piece. It's a, a lot a lot more um, solid than this. And then you just stab it on the other side, and you can shape it. Um, so I'm going right into the side to make it more pointy and um, narrower, and then stab the center again. So there are lots of ways how you can shape things flat on the mat without having to hold them in your hand and keep the fingers out of the way. Then obviously you have to lift it off again and then repeat this on the other side. And all the while you're sort of um, trying to narrow the ears down, you can actually make it already quite shapely so it starts to point inward by pulling the ear whilst it's fastened onto the mat but ever so slightly pulling it and that, that helps to shape the ear. And um, so I've now decided that's the inside of the ear. And once you've started doing that, then you can um, um, use a little bit of the cream wool and put that inside the ear. So it's got like a, a very a very um, a very thin layer of white inside the ear. And then what they do have, they have a bit of black around the edge of the ear. So you can do that too by adding a bit of black around the edge and felting that sort of just around the edge here and then you can fold it over and felt it onto the other side as well. You don't need to be very precise with this, just keep it very sort of delicate and, and wispy. It's just a hint of, um, of a darker um, edge around the ear. So don't don't make this a, a massive big feature. It's more it's more almost sort of something. If I if I asked you what does the donkey's ear look like, you wouldn't you wouldn't even be able to tell me that it had um, that around the ear. So it's a really delicate, um, quite um, yes, yeah, sort of hidden feature almost. But it's not hidden. Just not it's not like as as obvious as a nose or a leg or something like that. And um, and then you obviously have to make a second ear, hopefully um, very similar to the first one. They're never going to be identical, but that's okay because we are also not identical from one ear to the other. So there we go. So there's a, um, an ear done, on an ear for the donkey done. And um, that's what it looks like on the back. Just has a little bit of a black dusting and then has got the white here inside and then when you felt it on later um, you can shape it more so that the, this becomes the inside of the ear more and then you repeat this with your second batch of wool remember you just made a rough shape of a triangle so rounded triangle keeping that end unfelted folding the fibers that are outside that line on the inside felt it all down remember that you need to lift it off fairly soon Turn it round, continue the shaping. If at any point you feel that you've used a lot less wool on one than on the other ear, either take some wool off the ear now or um, add more wool to it. It's now is the time to do it before you felted it too much. And then you can start shaping it by pulling it ever so slightly along, drag it along your felting mat, but you're not really dragging it. You're just pretending as if you are. And felt it from both sides so you've got a nice solid finished um, fabric and then add a little bit of white that, that white will stay on the inside so you have to decide by this time by this point it, what the inside of the ear is okay Oh, I wonder who's going to win our Amazing Earth mat set today. Okay, and then um, as before, just add a little bit of dark wool around the edges. Felt them down on one end, on one side, and then fold them in so you can 
it can be quite it doesn't have to be very neat neat it's it is literally just meant to look like um, a hint of dark going around the donkey's um, edge of the ear and continue doing that all around the other side it's always a bit boring having to do two but we don't want a one-eared donkey so it's all right let's not complain at least it's not as bad as knitting two socks when you've knitted one and you've got to do another one that is sometimes can be so disheartening at least the ears don't take that long right so two pretty much similar kind of ears there yeah not too bad and then we need to attach them to the donkey and um, the ears um, you can broaden out the base a little bit that unfelted part of it and then you need to point the ears so that they're slightly pointing forward if you need you can use your fingers to um, also pull the wool more into shape and at this point just get the ear felted on so don't worry too much about um, shaping the ear while it's on the donkey and also if it's really long don't worry about that because we're going to shorten the ear by um, while whilst it's on and then um, you imagine the ears to be sort of maybe sticking out slightly to the side or slightly forward and um, you do this by just stabbing into the base of the ear to get rid of the fluffy bits first of all so they didn't need to be stabbed into the head and as you're stabbing along the ear can you see how i'm i'm, I'm actually stabbing along the ear my needle is going in that way the ear reduces in length as well and then you concentrate your stabbing on the ear hole on the inside of the ear and that will bring the um, will automatically make the ear come forward and shape so slightly inward as well so just give that a few stabs all around and then attach the second ear pretty straight away now the other ear is a little bit shorter so I'm taking a, a few of these wispy ends off and open up the base just gonna fasten it on just so that I could get my fingers out of the way make sure it's in the in a similar sit in a similar position it's all about the symmetry that's that is the sometimes the thing that can drive you nuts if it's not symmetrical and then just keep looking at the head of the donkey from the front because that gives you a good indication if the ears are in the right position and then shape it accordingly and it will all look um, a lot more um, complete once we've added that um, that it's not a mane it's like this like a stubble of, of, a, of a mane that goes there um, onto the donkey there you go so the they don't actually have hair coming into their faces at all they just have um they they just have like a um like it ends here where the ears are and i'm going to do that next according to the instructions i'm meant to do the the ridge next so i think i should do that because i must follow my own instructions and um, to do this you just lay out a strand of wool that goes across the back so make sure that's not too thick just tease it and twist it until it sort of fits the whole length of the donkey and then just felt that on from where the ears are all the way across to um, finish here on his bum that that stripe will sort of extend or it will continue into the donkey's tail felt that on and there is a reason why they've got this and I've, I, I read up on it ages ago and I can't remember actually I might just um, look at the I haven't mentioned this but obviously the donkey is also in the making simple needle felt book but he might not be part of the oh here he is so um, uh no okay that's why i thought that um you knew about the story that i had told you about the donkey because it's actually i've told it in the book but there's not much um detail about donkeys but apparently there is a reason why they've got that stripe on the back and i forgot 
bottom what that is. Yeah, no, it's not in here. I must have just read up on it and forgotten about it. Okay, so um, get this needle felted down into the thinnest stripe that you can manage. If um, you're indent indenting the back of the donkey, then um, just add a little bit more gray around it again to even it out. Um, get that down and then you're putting um, the uh, um, another stripe across here just where the shoulder is of the donkey. So take another wisp of wool, flatten it out and put it here and let it sort of teeter out, teeter out, no, tether out, oh, I don't know what the word is. Let it, um, yeah, just, just stop it before it gets to the legs and then felt that um, patterning then the first donkey I made. And, um, and then while we're at it, we're doing the tail and the tail, as I said, is, is basically, if you use a bit of wool and you twist this like you did earlier with uh, making the back, um, that back um, stri stripe, and then you, but then you leave a bushy bit here at the end. So you've got something quite um, solid. You can even felt this down a little bit. So you, you, you're almost making like, um, like a, a, a brush. So you've got a, um, a solid line here and then you've got like wispy ends at the end. And then once that, once that has been established, you just, oh, this is the end of petition. We're pinning the tail onto the donkey. This is now, um, you all need to have um, made your comments and Sophie is going to uh, pick a winner and then she'll tell me in a minute and I can announce it as well. And then of course we do exactly the same on, so if you're watching this on um, Thursday with us on Facebook, then this is also the time where you now can't, if you're commenting that won't go into the draw. Um, and then you've got sort of like a wispy, almost like a, a wispy brush there, um, the back of the tail. And um, for the main, we are going to do something slightly different. So you've got your black wool and you actually f uh, needle felting this on as if like it's a long bit of wool and you're just felting it on in the center. So we're not, I'm not worried about the, um, the length of the wool at the moment. I'm just getting it on so that it's established in the center. And then you need um, you you've got like a, a really wild Mohican there on your on your um, donkey, but then you have this you take your scissors and you, as you're uh, smoothing that together, you just cut it short. So you you you're basically creating like um, a really stubbly type of um, finish here. So it's like yeah, that's the best way I can explain it. And you can still stub into the middle a bit more, but don't flatten it. Leave that um, cut edge because it looks like a brush. Then, and then you have to adjust the um, ears again. And then finally, um, you can add a little bit more detail to the eyes. You could give your donkey an eyebrow with that dark wool. That makes the eye look a little bit more, they have actually sort of eyebrows and um, eyelashes. So that will just enhance the eye a bit more. And now that the eye is all dry, there you are. Makes it look a bit more pretty in the face. Do this on the other side as well. And that's your donkey done. And my little donkey, the other donkey is ecstatic to have a friend. And um, just in comparison, well, they're slightly different, but also very much the same. But you can, um, of, of course, always um, adjust some of the bits on your donkey now that you look at it with a more critical eye once you've um, added all the details that need adding. But just remember there comes a point where you just have to put the needle down and let it be because we all always look at our makes and we always think oh I need to do this, need more of this, oh we need a, a white tummy, that's one thing I haven't done. Let's give him a, a dusting on his tummy, that's quite sweet, tickle his tummy a bit more. Um, just a little bit of the white wool on the tummy and felt it down very gently. You might want to use your, definitely want to use your medium needle, if not your fine needle. Um, if you've managed to do all of this with a need, medium needle, 
great because um, medium, needle, medium needles are great all around us so you might have been able to do it all with your medium needle. I'm just checking the time. We've, we've managed to keep this to an hour and a half so um, let's just see if we've got a winner. Um, don't think um, Sophie's caught up with us. Oh no, has she? Uh, ah, and the winner is uh drum roll please okay um okay i have no idea who the winner is because i can't read it in the in the um in the comments but i'm sure that sophie will whisper it in my ear in a minute maybe we haven't announced it yet ah it is um the the winner is sarah summit Sarah, just Sarah, leave it as that. I don't want to mention any surnames. Um, and that's it, basically. So well done, Sarah, for winning yourself um, our favorite um, felting mud. Yes, Sarah Summerton has won. Um, I don't actually know which one I've just made. Oh, yes, you know, it was this one. So this is the newly made donkey. He's all, all ears. You can um, position the ears a little bit more back like that. And hopefully we'll see lots and lots of happy donkeys jumping around on our Everyone a Maker um, Facebook group. Do join it if you haven't done so yet. We will ask you three very, very innocent questions like, are you here out of personal interests? Um, what would you like to learn? And can you adhere to the rules? And the rules are really, really simple. It's just that we're really nice to each other and that um, it's a page where, or a group where we promote our products. Um, so we ask you to respect that. Um, and please do answer the questions, otherwise we can't allow you in. And um, I've still got wool left over, so that's not bad. Definitely not much gray left. So um, yeah, pro obviously, Oh yeah, there's a bit of grey left, so if you needed to add a bit more, you could. There's definitely lots more of that brown black and lots of the white, so that can go in your stash if you've got our donkey pack from the Nativity kit. And I can't tell you, these two donkeys are already in love with each other, so I'm going to let them have a little schnooze here and a little schmooze. They're all very happy, 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 happy donkeys. Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. If I have, then so be it. Remember, we've got um, our 2021 calendar at the ready. You can order it now. It's got lots of um, lovely images in there, mostly of um, subscription boxes of the past. But we are also um, now selling our polar bear pack. Um, so you've you've got the polar bear in January. It's a felt. It's a it's a make along over three sessions, and we've got a polar back polar back no, a polar bear pack um, that you can buy to felt along. Comes with the skis as well, and um, yeah, it's just a really happy calendar. And we remind you of certain dates, and then the chicken is one that we're uh, is a is a make along in in March, and. Um, if you if you see some of these on here and you love them, don't be disappointed because a lot of them are still available as a pack. Um, the hare and the fox certainly are, and so is the fawn, and so is the butterfly. So all of these you can now buy as a as a pack, including the dachshunds and the sloths, and the otters will be available very soon because we've just had them on Creating Craft, so we we keep them exclusive for a little bit longer. So is the wolf. And of course, this one you can get right now if you go onto our website and look for the subscription boxes. We don't tie you into contracts. Um, you can skip boxes. You can change the payment date. We don't want we we don't want you to um, um, like feel dread for the boxes to arrive. We want you to want the subscription boxes, and you, that you can't wait and you run towards your postman to grab it out of his hand and then apologize very profusely and um, and say sorry. I didn't mean to grab it out of your hand, but I'm so excited. So um, yes, and apparently the story about the um, the cross on the back of the donkey is because it's Jesus's cross. Anyway, I'm I don't know what Darwin would say to that, but um, well. There are different views for everything. So um, we'll go with this one for now. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Sophie, for being there. I'll miss you so much when you won't be here. Maybe this is the last time. Okay, I've got to go now so I don't start crying. And um, yeah, take care, everybody. And I'll see you again on Thursday. Bye.